The air hangs thick and humid, a jungle of towering cycads and ancient ferns stretching into a mist-shrouded horizon. You stand at the edge of a water lagoon. The ground beneath your feet a soft, damp loam that hints at the giants who have passed this way before. A low rumble vibrates through your bones, a sound more felt than heard, like the distant drum of a forgotten deity. And then you see it, a shadow moving among the primeval trees, a silhouette that Hollywood has tried and failed to capture in its full majestic weirdness. A colossal creature, its back a magnificent, spiky sail, steps into the clearing. This isn't the lumbering, slow-witted beast of old cartoons. This is the true Stegosaurus, a living contradiction of grace and brute force. Its head, surprisingly small for such a massive body, bobs gently as it plucks leaves with a horny beak. Ever wonder what it truly felt like to stand in the shadow of a living giant? To feel the ground tremble with each measured step? To breathe the same air as a creature that seems sculpted by a dream? This is a world where danger is a given, but so is a kind of humbling wonder. We are here not just to observe, but to understand. To see past the action figure image and into the living, breathing reality of this magnificent animal. You might be watching this from a bustling city apartment or a quiet park bench, but for a few moments, you are here with me, back in the late Jurassic. Now, let's journey back in time and uncover the story of a lost world. The name itself, Stegosaurus, is a bit of a misnomer, a curious legacy of early paleo pioneers. It means roof lizard or plated lizard, a name given by paleontologists who, upon first finding the bones, thought the creature's massive plates lay flat against its back, like, like shingles it. on a roof. A funny thought, isn't it? As if this majestic creature was walking around with a built-in sunshade. Of course, we now know those plates stood upright, a stunning set of natural architecture that has puzzled scientists for over a century. It's a classic example of science at work, a brilliant initial discovery, followed by decades of new information and evolving theories. As you watch it graze, a sense of awe washes over you, but also a feeling of curiosity. What was the purpose of that incredible backplate display? Was it truly just for show or something more? You watch the Stegosaurus as it slowly ambles forward, each plate on its back a magnificent bony slab, a natural work of art. The largest of these plates, near the creature's hips, could be nearly three feet tall, a size that makes you gasp a little. What an incredible sight. For decades, the most popular theory was that these plates were a form of armor, an impenetrable shield against the bite of a huge predator, like Allosaurus. It's an easy idea to believe, isn't it? The plates look like protection, but when you look closer, you notice they're arranged in a staggered pattern, not a solid interlocking wall. They're also full of blood vessels, a network of tiny channels that would have made them an extremely poor choice for deflecting a 30-foot-long carnivore's tooth. The reality, as always, is far more subtle and elegant. The most widely accepted theory today is that those plates were, in fact, a kind of internal heating and cooling system, a built-in thermostat. Think of them like the radiator in a car or the ears of an elephant, which are filled with blood vessels and used to radiate excess heat. The large surface area of the plates combined with their rich blood supply would have allowed the Stegosaurus to regulate its body temperature. Imagine the chill of a Jurassic morning. This low-slung giant could orient its plates toward the sun, soaking up the warmth like a solar panel. You can almost feel the gentle warmth radiating from them. And when the midday sun beat down and the air grew thick and stifling, it could turn its body away from the sun and use a light breeze to cool itself down, shedding the heat away from its massive body. It's a beautifully simple and effective solution, a testament to nature's ingenuity. Beyond thermoregulation, another theory suggests the plates were a form of display. They could have been brightly colored or covered in a contrasting pattern, a sign of health or a way to attract a mate. Perhaps the largest, most vibrant plates signaled the most desirable partner, a flash of prehistoric fashion. It's a wonderful thought 
this lumbering colossus, not just a walking fortress, but a gentle giant with a magnificent showy display. It reminds you that these animals were more than just monsters. They were part of a complex living ecosystem, communicating with one another in ways we are only just beginning to understand. You follow the Stegosaurus as it moves with a surprising, almost ponderous grace. Its front legs are shorter than its hind legs, giving its back a unique arch and its head a low ground level position. This posture wasn't an accident. It was perfectly adapted to its diet. You notice its small, narrow head, which seems almost out of place on its massive body. A good-natured smile touches your face as you imagine the brain within, famously described as being no larger than a walnut. What an incredible creature, a literal mountain of a reptile with a tiny command center. It's a gentle reminder that brains aren't everything. Sometimes, a simple effective design is all you need to survive. With its small beak-like snout and lack of grinding teeth, you can tell this herbivore was not built for chewing. Instead, its mouth was a precision tool, a living set of clippers perfectly suited for plucking low-lying vegetation. You watch as it uses its bony beak to snip fronds from a fern. It's not a violent act of tearing and rending, but a delicate, almost balletic movement. This is a creature of slow motion grazing, a living lawnmower on a colossal scale. While its famous plates draw all the attention, it's this small, humble head that tells you everything about its day-to-day -day existence. Scientists have found clues in fossilized remains that suggest this animal's digestive process was equally unique. They've found collections of smooth, rounded stones, known as gastroliths, or stomach stones, associated with Stegosaurus fossils. This tells us that after snipping off tough plant matter, the Stegosaurus would swallow it whole, and these stones in its gizzard-like stomach would grind the food down. It's a clever solution, a way to process a huge volume of coarse, fibrous plants without needing to evolve complex grinding teeth. It's a wonderful example of convergent evolution, a strategy also seen in modern day crocodiles and birds. The next time you see a chicken or an ostrich, you can smile knowing they share a clever little secret with a Jurassic giant. This reliance on low lying plants also helps explain why it coexisted so peacefully with its long necked cousins. As you continue your observation, you're reminded that the world of the Stegosaurus was a far cry from the arid, dusty landscapes often imagined. This was a lush, vibrant era, the late Jurassic, a time before the flowering plants took over. The air is thick with the scent of pine and humid decay. The ground is a carpet of ferns, mosses, and low-lying cycads. This wasn't a sparse desert. It was a flourishing ecosystem, a green, sprawling buffet perfectly suited for a creature that could only browse from the bottom up. The Stegosaurus was a living testament to its environment, a natural lawnmower helping to shape the landscape, its slow, steady consumption of plants, clearing paths, and allowing new life to take hold. You get a sense of its place in this world, its ecological niche. The Stegosaurus was a major consumer, but it was also a prime target. Its body was a walking buffet for predators, a massive meal waiting to be had. But nature, in its infinite wisdom, never leaves an animal without a fighting chance. The Stegosaurus's primary predator was the formidable Allosaurus, a large theropod dinosaur with powerful jaws and serrated teeth. You imagine the chase, the tension, the sheer power of two titans clashing in the jungle. It's a reminder of the relentless evolutionary arms race that was constantly at play. Evidence of these struggles isn't just a fantasy. It's written in the fossil record. Scientists have found fossilized Stegosaurus plates with telltale bite marks that perfectly match the teeth of an Allosaurus. In some cases, these wounds show signs of healing, suggesting that the Stegosaurus was able to fend off its attacker and escape. It gives you a new appreciation for the creature, a sense of its resilience and strength. This wasn't a passive prey animal. It was an opponent that could fight back, and its primary weapon was not its plates, but something far more lethal at the other end of its body. 
You catch sight of it now, a long muscular tail swinging with the grace of a whip. The stegosaurus's tail swings back and forth, a deliberate counterweight to its ponderous body. But this isn't just a simple rudder for balance, it's a weapon of incredible power. At the very end of its tail are four formidable spikes, two on each side, that are long and pointed, some reaching lengths of up to three feet. These were the true deterrents, the business end of the Stegosaurus. It's these spikes that have become famous, so much so that they've earned their own unofficial name, the Thagomizer. The term coined in a far side comic strip by Gary Larson has been adopted by paleontologists as a term of endearment and respect a playful nod to a serious and dangerous weapon. Imagine an encounter with an attacking Allosaurus. The predator, with its massive jaws and serrated teeth, lunges for the giant herbivore's flank. But the Stegosaurus isn't helpless. It stands its ground, its body low to the ground, and swings its muscular tail with devastating force. The Thagomizer would have been a, a formidable mace capable of puncturing hide and bone with a single, well-aimed blow. It's a humbling thought, isn't it? That an animal with such a famously small brain could possess a weapon so perfectly designed for defense. This wasn't a dumb brute. It was a survivor, perfectly adapted to its world. A gentle giant that could hold its own when challenged. Paleontologists have compelling evidence of the Thagomizer's effectiveness. They have discovered fossilized bones from an Allosaurus that contain a perfectly sized Stegosaurus spike-shaped puncture wound. The bone even shows signs of infection and healing, meaning the Allosaurus survived the attack. But it was a close call. It's a remarkable piece of forensic evidence from the Jurassic, a clear snapshot of an ancient struggle, and a mm. testament to the fact that Hollywood got it right about at least one thing. The Stegosaurus was not a passive victim. It was a fighter, a warrior with a spiked tail. And this knowledge gives you a profound new respect for the creature. Its legacy, however, extends far beyond its physical form. The story of Stegosaurus is not just about its life, but also about its discovery, a tale of scientific puzzles and a journey into the distant past. The first fossils of Stegosaurus were unearthed in 1877 by a pioneering paleontologist, Othniel Charles Marsh, during the Bone Wars, a period of intense fossil hunting rivalry. You can almost feel the excitement, the awe of unearthing something so bizarre and magnificent from the Rock of Colorado. But even Marsh, a brilliant scientist, was baffled by what he found. The plates and spikes were initially a mystery. He thought the plates might have been arranged in a single row down the animal's spine, or even that they lay flat. It took decades of further discoveries and painstaking work to assemble the creature correctly, piece by piece. The Stegosaurus became a cornerstone of the dinosaur renaissance in the mid-20th century. This was a period when scientists began to view dinosaurs not as slow, lumbering, cold-blooded beasts, but as active, dynamic, and potentially warm-blooded animals. The very design of the Stegosaurus, with its complex plates, and powerful tail helped fuel this new understanding. Its sheer strangeness forced a reconsideration of everything we thought we knew about dinosaurs. The fact that an animal so large and complex could have evolved such an intricate system for thermoregulation or a powerful weapon for defense suggested a higher level of physiological activity than was previously believed. It was a catalyst for a total paradigm shift in paleontology. The bones of Stegosaurus have helped us understand more than just its own story. The fossils have provided a window into its entire ecosystem, revealing its diet through microscopic analysis of its teeth and even its potential social behavior from trackways that show multiple individuals moving together. The creature's unique anatomy has made it a symbol of the wondrous and often unexpected paths evolution can take. Its legacy is more than just a place in the fossil record. It's a testament to the power of scientific discovery and the constant, humbling process of uncovering the truth. It's an icon, a living puzzle that continues to inspire and challenge us.
From a strange armored puzzle to a global icon, the Stegosaurus has cemented its place in our collective imagination. You've seen its plates, spikes, so the and small head. The lab, You've learned its name, its diet, it's and its history. But its legacy extends far beyond a scientific text or a museum display. This animal has been a star of Hollywood blockbusters and a fixture in children's dinosaur collections for generations. It's the dinosaur that looks like nothing else. A magnificent, scaly reptile with an unmistakable silhouette. Hollywood has taken its liberties, of course, often portraying it as a gentle, defenseless behemoth that exists just to be chased. But you know better. You've seen the evidence of its powerful Thagomizer and its evolutionary battles. One of the most persistent myths, often perpetuated in early cartoons and movies, is the second brain in its hip. This idea came from an enlarged nerve cavity in the creature's pelvis that was once mistaken for a secondary brain to help control its massive body and tail. It's a whimsical idea, a sort of backup computer for a walking tank. But modern science has debunked this, revealing that the cavity was simply a larger than normal bundle of nerves, similar to what you'd find in many large animals. It's a great example of how our understanding of the past is always evolving, how a simple fossil can lead to a fascinating, if incorrect theory that takes on a life of its own in pop culture. Today, the Stegosaurus is more than just a famous dinosaur. It's a symbol of discovery and the wonder of the natural world. It reminds us that even when we think we know a creature from millions of years ago, there is always more to learn, more puzzles to solve. It stands as a testament to the incredible diversity of life that has existed on our planet and the endless stories waiting to be uncovered in the fossil record. The majestic, plate-backed giant you see before you is a living, breathing history book, a chapter in a much larger story. The sun begins to set on this primeval landscape, casting long, peaceful shadows. The air cools, and the magnificent Stegosaurus moves off into the twilight. A living myth that was once a living reality. Our journey through time is now complete, but the feeling of awe and wonder remains. Think for a moment about this creature, this contradiction of slow movement and defensive might, of small head, and magnificent plates. It lived, breathed, and thrived on a planet that was so different, yet so familiar. Its story and the stories of so many other prehistoric creatures are a powerful reminder of how fleeting our time is and how ancient and enduring the planet's story is. As you leave the Jurassic behind and return to your world, you carry with you not just the facts, but the feeling of standing in the shadow of a giant, a humbling, awe-inspiring connection to a lost world.